Good morning, good morning. I am going to show you something. I am so excited. My daughter and I just got back from our speed walking and look what we found on our way home. I'm like floored. Usually I have to go up in the mountain to find stuff like this, but I found this in the city. Look at this. You know what these are? These are beautiful fresh mushrooms. They're called Dryads. And if you break one of these open, it smells like um, it smells like watermelon rinds. But they are simply, simply delicious. Uh, we will not use the butt ends because that's very woody. But we will use the cap part where it's nice and tender. And we're going to slice this up. And this is going to be uh, either dinner or a little bit of lunch. But I'm not going to consume all of it at one time because I want this to stretch. And there's more out there, so I'll probably be heading back there. Hopefully, my daughter will accompany me. Maybe not today, tomorrow. <laughs> but there was one the size of my butt end. It was so big. So look, at, look how great. Free food, guys. If you ever take the time to look around, you get to find things that are so full of nutrients that actually is so beneficial for us, and it's out there for us to pick. So there you go, my new find for the day. I am so excited. I am so excited. So when I cook these up, I'll make a little video and I'm going to show you. I just have to show you how big this mushroom is. Here is my hand and do you see that? Look at that. It's like, look at my hand and look at this mushroom. And there's two of them. There's some underneath. And this is how you can tell uh, what the mushrooms like. They grow in shells. Underneath, there's no gills. It's almost like pores. And then the top, if you touch it, it's rough. And they call this the Dryad Saddle. So that's how you distinguish this mushroom. But before you put any mushrooms in your mouth, guys, you have to make sure you know what you're picking. So do get yourself some books. Do some research before you put any wild mushrooms in your mouth. Um, but yeah, these ones here, if you break off a little piece... Not sure if there's one that I can show you. It's a small one. And you smell it. Mm, it smells just like the rinds of a watermelon. So I'm going to give these a nice wash and I'm going to fry some up. It's going to go great in a nice little panini. So there you go, guys. So I'll see you soon. By the way, guys, if you're looking into starting to pick mushrooms, um, these are some of the books I recommend. Uh, there's Mushrooms and Other Fungi of North America. That's a good one. I love this one. Mushrooms of All Northeastern United States and Eastern Canada. That's another really good book. And this one here is a pocket book that you should always carry with you. And when you spot mushrooms, you can start looking at their characteristics. And if you follow, uh, for example, if it has gills, you follow this way. If it has no gills, it tells you to move a different direction. And uh, if it's something like the one that I picked, it tells you to go to the last page. And then you start finding your mushrooms. And then it takes you to where the mushroom is. And it tells you more of the characteristics. So these are good books to carry with you if you want to start um, going and to pick mushrooms. And what we're hoping to find this year is some um, chicken, uh, uh, chicken of the woods. It's supposed to be so good. We did find some last year, but it was so little. We didn't even want to disturb it. Uh, you don't want to get greedy when you're doing this. And you have to try. And um, yeah, you want to wait till they grow and then cut it a certain way. You don't want to just rip it right out like I did this one year. I just ripped it up because I couldn't get to it. Um, yeah, that wasn't a good thing. My daughter gave me heck about that. But you do want to have either a pocket knife with you where you leave part of the mushroom still on wherever it's growing. But these are some great books that you should look into if you do want to start. Let me just move this. If you do want to start maybe picking mushrooms. And, uh, yeah. And now I'll show you an example. Uh, I'm starting to cut some of the mushrooms for my daughter. And this part down here is so tough you really don't even want to cook it um, some of the parts you just won't cook them at all but yeah like for for instance this mushroom right I don't want to dirty this Hold on. 
like this mushroom here, uh, you're going to leave that out completely. So you're going to probably end up cutting it right across here because this part is very woodsy. So you're not going to, uh, you're not going to use that. But my daughter wants it just a little bit in a pan. So I'm going to, I just cut some up and I'm going to heat up my pan with some olive oil. Right there. And I'm going to throw these in. And just put a little bit of steak spice and these are done. Oh my god, I wish you could smell this, guys. When are they going to make smell TV? See how nice we're getting? And all you need is a little bit of olive oil, some salt, and some steak spice, and you're thinking you're eating meat. Guys, look at that. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of steak spice, and a little bit of smoked, smoked salt. And this is called this is breakfast. Maybe some avocado. This is a very meaty mushroom. It's almost like having meat. It has that texture under your teeth, so it's a good, for people that are um, transitioning to a vegan diet and they're missing that texture under the teeth, these are the type of mushrooms that you want to get. Really, really good. And there's one called ch uh, Chicken of the Woods, which is like an orange mushroom. I can't wait to get those. And then there's the maitake, the delicious, delicious, health beneficial, well they're all health beneficial, but the maitake are something else, really good. My daughter's got a good eye for those mushrooms, but that's how simple you can make a nice little dish of mushrooms. You could eat it alone, or put it next to some maybe smoked tofu, that would be good, eh Erica? These next to smoked tofu. Mm -hmm. My God. I swear to God, it's like you're eating meat. These are fantastic. Look, they're almost ready. And these mushrooms, the younger they are, the better and the more tender they are. But I wasn't going to let these pass at all. Sorry. I was not going to let these mushrooms go. I don't mind even if they're a little more bitey. So here is the mushroom that I picked. Here we go. I'm just going to show you. It could grow up to 30 centimeters wide. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I... I have seen them bigger than a foot wide. This is like one of the most impressive shelf mushrooms ever. And they do grow in clusters. Sometimes you have that longer neck, but the top is kind of rough like I showed you. And uh, the, um, the taste, the taste is... Um, the taste is amazing. <laughs> the taste is amazing. But the if you break a piece or you go smell the mushroom, it smells like the skin of the um, the skin of a watermelon, that green part of the watermelon. That's exactly or you get that cucumber smell. That is the exact smell when you smell this mushroom. Really something else. It is just beautiful. Uh, where do you find it? You find it on living or dead trees, depending. Uh, hard hardwood trees that are fallen um, and it's from May to November so if you ever come across this mushroom it's a must uh, do pick it up do do your test if you're not sure ask someone who's picked mushrooms before there's actually groups I think on Facebook I like to join them 
Uh, but there's, I've got so many groups now. Uh, it's crazy. But if you, if you're afraid, maybe you can try some of those groups and you could post pictures and they could tell you what those mushrooms are. Um, if you're not sure, again, you could also do a spore check where you put it upside down and you leave it for a day. Come the morning after you see your paper towel, what color, uh, the spores were, uh, it, they'll tell you exactly what you're looking for. And, um, the taste is like amazing. When I tell you it's amazing, it's amazing. So this is the Dryad Saddle. It's a polyporous uh, mushroom that means there's no gills underneath it's got all little uh, it looks like almost like a little sponge underneath so that's what this mushroom looks like and as it gets older the underneath won't be as white it'll be a little more yellow so that means the meat might be a little tougher but we like it that way anyhow it doesn't matter uh, but if you're looking for a fresh one make sure that the gills uh, not the gills that the underneath is more whitish but the top when you feel it it feels like almost it has little feathers uh, it grows out like little feathers. I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, here, I put it away in a bag. When you look at the top, do you see how these actually lift? Do you see how they lift? It almost looks like uh, a bird's body. Actually, it looks like a bird's body. And these are all detached. And that's how you recognize this mushroom. And like I said underneath, it looks like a little sponge. These are a little older. They're not as white, but they're just as delicious. You just have to take off just a little more because it's a little tougher here. But we just had some. My daughter was like in heaven. I was right up there with her. <laughs> Died and gone to heaven. So there you go, guys. This is my way to show you something a little more interesting than just going to the grocery store. But again, I'm going to warn you if you're not sure... Um, if you're not sure about mushrooms, before you put anything in your mouth, you need to know what you're putting in your mouth. But even if you don't eat them, keep your eye out and look at all the beautiful varieties of mushrooms that are out there. Uh, I will tell you, uh, do your homework before you pick anything and bring it home to eat. But yes, when you go out for a walk, check out those mushrooms. They're so interesting. They really are. And as you get to know them, you're going to get to know some beautiful species of mushrooms that you can actually bring home and enjoy as a meal at very little price. It's called bending over and picking them. That's the price you have to pay and uh, really, really good. So there you go, guys. I hope you like this little interesting video. It's hoping it's an interesting one. And uh, just to show you that when you go out there, uh, life really gives you an abundance of food. It's just a matter of finding it and looking for it. Uh, I have been picking chicory every day. Uh, I eat it raw. I eat it as a salad. I also make it cooked. My family can't get enough of the cooked ones. Uh, the cooked chicory is so good. And I even cook the flowers, believe it or not. There's so much nutrients in the flower and in the plant itself. So there you go, guys. Give something a chance sometimes. If you have some chicory in your yard, uh, take the time to cut it and bring it home, wash it, and toss it in a salad. I'll tell you, you will not be disappointed. Make sure it's nice and young. If it's a little older, where the chicory is a little taller and... Um, a little more not as tender uh, those can be cooked you don't have to say well I'm not picking them up because they're too old cut it down wash it boil it cut it up after you've boiled it drain some water out of it and all you have to do is toss it with a little bit of balsamic vinegar olive oil garlic salt pepper a little bit of chili flakes and you smack that in between two slices of bread and you're in heaven my husband wants to bring that to work every day that's how much he loves it so there you go mushroom picking chicory picking the planet has food for us guys and guess what it's free so i'll see you in my next video guys for more videos like this make sure to subscribe to connie's rawsome kitchen give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends